Well, good morning, everyone. We get together most weekday mornings at 8 o'clock Central to talk about the small business startup business funding package, and that's shared here on the screen with you. We're, we're going to approach it a little bit differently today. As I think uh, many of you know, we actively hire small business financial consultants. So let's pretend for the next few minutes that you are a small business financial consultant. So in other words, you're paid through the grant to help small businesses. What do you think is the number one question that you would receive from small businesses? It would be, how do I get funding? That's typically the question. Now, sometimes they skip past the question and just say, I want funding. But uh, th those that are more astute say, how do I get funding to start or grow a business? That's the most common question that you and I would see. Well, we need to be able to give individuals, entrepreneurs, small business owners, a, a concise and an accurate and a transparent response to what does it take to get business funding. Now, to no surprise, that's exactly what we applied for and received a grant for, and we call that the Startup Business Funding Package. And so this checklist here is exactly what you and I would speak with any entrepreneur when we're educating them about what does it take to get business funding? Because I think that there, well, I don't think I know, there's many, many entrepreneurs that want that need funding but many case in many cases they don't qualify and worse yet they often don't know what it takes to qualify but the truth is it's not very complicated so let's go through today what you and I would teach and and we're in the active process of setting up what we call community clinics so if you'd be interested in teaching a community clinic at a local library or chamber or through a, a local community center, uh, please let us know. Reach out to us. We have a free training curriculum, and we'd love to training to get you trained. We'd love to collaborate in your community. But let's go ahead and, and dig into what does it take to qualify for funding. Now, again, we're talking about business funding. We're not talking about personal funding. Personal funding is a much different animal, right? Personal funding, they're looking primarily at your personal credit score, and they're looking at your personal income. Well, we're leaving that in, in the rear view mirror. We're talking about business funding. So again, if you and I were small business financial consultants, we were teaching a community clinic at, let's say, your local library. We had a group of 12, 14, maybe 24 entrepreneurs. This is what we would be teaching them. The first thing that's important to have if you want to qualify for business funding is a credible business address. Now, when you're teaching this in, in, in your community, you'll have to, to infer what the objections would be by the audience and proactively address those. So just imagine that you're the average person sitting in the audience all you're thinking about is, man, I just need money to start or grow a business. And then this guy or this woman in front of the room says, I need a business address. That's not going to make sense to them. They're going to think, no, I don't need an address. You know, I can work from my back bedroom or I have a virtual office. But what they don't commonly know is that when lenders, especially for larger business loans, are underwriting, in other words, deciding if they're going to approve the loan or not, they typically will start with the business address. Why would they care? They care because typically a larger business loan is going, they're going to put a lien against the business. And so if the business doesn't pay it back, then they have rights to the assets of the business. Well, if there is no real business address, how are they going to get the business assets? I'm going to skip over to this other tab for a second. Many of you know we have kind of a, a little brother program compared to the, the startup business program. It's called the cheap business address. What it has is just the first bullet and the last bullet, nothing in between. 
but it, it just nicely depicts this documentation. This is typically what a lender would look for because a lender is not going to just trust and say, okay, you gave me an address, that must be your address, fine, check the box and move forward. Typically, they're going to look for documentation of a real lease. In other words, you need to have a real lease. You might be thinking, well, this sounds like a problem, right? I, I don't have the money or I don't really have a need to go out and lease a physical space that's going to be costly and, and maybe you don't feel like it's needed or you're just not ready for it yet. Well, that's what we can provide legally and ethically to start off the process is to get a real address by having a real executed lease. And you wonder, well, what, what's a real lease look like? What, what would it take? We make everything very transparent. So here on cheapbusinessaddress.com, you can click on this click here and it'll literally bring up the lease. So we would create a lease, true legal, ethical, and this will populate here in a moment eventually. And, and you'll have the, the real lease. It's a 25 page lease. So you can go look at it now to understand exactly what's in it. What is in it though, is not just the lease, but it also includes three important other elements that lenders will typically look for. They're going to usually look for an acceptance letter. They're going to typically look for a landlord's lien waiver, which means that the lender has first right of uh, access and, and collateral to the business that's been pledged and the guarantee agreement. So I don't go too deep in the weeds, but you can start to see if, if you and I are small business financial consultants and we're out teaching community clinics, helping entrepreneurs understand what does it take to qualify for funding? Because we're not out trying to sell something to them. We're trying to educate them on what it takes. Now, if they want our help, fine. We, we have a program, program that can assist them, but that's really secondary in nature. If they want to use this grant subsidized resource, they can or they can follow this guidance. But without doubt, the first thing we need is a good address. And without a good address, it will frequently keep us from getting larger business loans. The second thing we need to do is have an entity that's in good standing with the Secretary of State. Now through the grant, we do that for free. And you notice the, the address came free, by the way, as well as filing with the Secretary of State. Now you might, let's say again, you're in front of the room and you're teaching this, this curriculum at your community clinic, at your local library or chamber or church or where have you. And, and the person raises their hand and says, but sir, but, but ma'am, I'm already filed with the Secretary of State. I already have an entity. That's great. If you already have that, then that's why I mentioned we have the cheap business address that provides just the first and the last bullets, which we'll get to, of course, if they don't need the other elements. Once we have the address, we're in good, I'm sorry, good standing with Secretary of State, then what we need to do is go get our EIN, and that's free, simple, and fast to the IRS website. And we need to open our business bank account. Yes, we need to have a business bank account to be credible. And in fact, most business lenders will only fund a business that has a business account. Well, what you and I would, if again, if we're in front of this room and we're educating this group of people, what you'll commonly have is someone in the room that, that doesn't know what you and I know. They'll raise their hand and they'll say, well, you don't understand. I, I've got a brand new business. Uh, this doesn't apply to me. And what you have to gently help them understand is, no, this exactly applies to you. We're showing you how to set up a fundable business. And if again, if they want to work with you, work with us, then we can help them do that. that that's really secondary in nature. But everything that we're discussing is relevant to a brand new business. So you can't let your audience dismiss it and say, oh, this doesn't matter to me because I have a new business. It does. This is what it takes to have a fundable business, whether it's new or not new. All right, so once we have the address and we are in good standing with the Secretary of State and we have our EIN and our business bank account, now we've got that foundation built. 
Are we ready to go to funding? And that's what people will come to me. Great, great. I have the entity. I'm ready to go to funding. Well, at this point, the amount of funding that you would qualify for is going to be quite small because there are some missing pieces. So let's talk about what those missing pieces are that, of course, are included in the package. So next, what we want to do now that we have the foundation of the business built is we want to add primary trade lines. Some people get excited about this. Some people, their eyes roll back in the head. Trade lines, oh my gosh, where are we at now? But, it, and you can see it's free over here. So we're going to add primary trade lines under the EIN, which depicts to the outside world that our business is credible, it's credit worthy, and we pay our bills as promised. You can imagine why that would be important when we're getting ready to go borrow a large amount of funding. You might have a question from the audience where they'd say, hey, Gilbert, let's say Gilbert's up front or Mr. Prez. Mr. Prez, Mr. Prez, uh, what does that mean, Mr. Prez? What, what type of trade lines will you add? Well, what do you need? Do you need real estate? Do you need a, a business automobile? Do you want a business credit card? Do you just want those little net 30 accounts? So we'll work with the client through the grant to figure out what type of trade lines they want and add those. So they're relevant. They're useful trade lines. They're, they're legal. They're, they're actually real. So now we have the basis of an entity. And then within 30 to 60 days, because they're going to ask you, they're going to raise their hand and say, uh, Miss Shepard, how long does this take? And you'd say, well, it does take about 30 to 60 days. Now, what if they turned around and said, well, uh, Mr. Fennell, I, I don't have that long. I need funding quicker. Well, great. Is your business already set up correctly? Is it already fundable? If so, simply scroll down under resources and we can take them to financing today. Or let's say conversely, uh, let's say they say, hey, Mr. Diot, thank you for teaching the course today. Uh, my, my business isn't ready, but I still need funding now. Fine. Let's go ahead and get you some offers now for what you do qualify for. No hard inquiries. Let's see what you qualify for now. Get some working capital in your pocket, and then we can move forward with this process. But it's just, it's wrong. It's, I don't say ignorant because that seems too strong. It, it's financially illiterate to think that we can just want a large amount of business funding and not qualify for it. So we're literally in this, this discussion today, if you were teaching one of our community clinics, explaining to the audience, what does it take to be fundable? We need a credible business infrastructure. We need to have business credit, which will add primary trade lines. So then the question is, well, is that good enough? No, it's not good enough. We have one more bullet. We need to make sure that the business, even though it's a new business, that's not an excuse, we need to have a balance sheet. A balance sheet? Why do I need that? Well, that shows the lender the assets and the liabilities of the business. Now, again, you'll have someone that raises their hand and say, well, Mr. Thompson, uh, you know, I have a new business. Of course, I don't have any assets or liabilities. Well, think about that for a second. Having no liabilities is a good thing. That means your business doesn't have other debt, other obligations that it has to serve. So that's good. Wouldn't we like to tell the lender that? Because the lender doesn't know if you've already borrowed a million dollars. Well, no, no, of course I haven't. Well, you know it because you're smart. See, that's what'll happen. You'll work with these entrepreneurs and they know their business inside and out. But you and I don't. The lender doesn't, and if we can't convey the status of the business properly, legally, ethically, to show that it's credible for funding, we're not going to be able to get approved. So the point is, we're going to create a balance sheet for the business, and if there are no liabilities, fine, show that. But then the, the other side of the balance sheet would be the assets, right? Assets are the things that the business owns. Liabilities are the, the things that it owes, O-W-E-S. So again, you'll have someone from the back of the room say, well, Mr. Ward, you don't understand. I've got a brand new business. Of course, there's nothing on my balance sheet. 
Well, we've got to teach them differently. Well, you could have a new business, but you could have a strong balance sheet. And in fact, that's part of why we were selected by the grant for the Startup Business Funding Package is we literally, literally, tra literally transfer over assets to the new business's balance sheet. Well, why does that matter? Well, because it provides collateral for funding. If you were the banker, wouldn't you feel better about loaning money out if the borrower had collateral, which means something that they're pledging of value, that in case the, the loan repayment didn't occur, that there was something to mitigate the risk of the lender? Of course, that's important. So just as it's important to have a good, credible business infrastructure, which you and I can provide them, just as it's important to have primary trade lines, which we're going to provide them, it's also important to have collateral. And we will provide that. That's part of, of the process. Now, what's even better is that we'll transfer those assets, which we say, and which we say and do, of course, and then we'll turn around and help them liquidate those, collect that money. So as that money is collected, because there are receivables, right? Accounts receivables. As those receivables are collected, now that shows deposits into the business bank account to make the business look even more solvent. So it's like putting a puzzle together. So you can see very distinctly, very transparently, what is the checklist that it takes to have a credible business for business funding. If you're one of our small business financial consultants, people will often not know this and they'll decide, no, I, I, I just want funding. Well, great. Let's take a moment and let's determine if your business is ready for funding. Not, not if you emotionally are ready for funding, but is your business credible for funding? Do you have a good, com unique commercial address? Yes or no? Do you have a business entity that's in good standing with the Secretary of State? Yes or no? Do you have your EIN and a business bank account? Yes or no? Do you have a strong business credit profile, which is typically defined as at least an 80, 8080 Paydex score and IntelliScore? Yes or no? Do you have a strong balance sheet that demonstrates that you have collateral for funding? Yes or no? If they say yes to all of those questions, they are fundable. They are ready to go to funding. They do not need this program. That'll probably be about one out of 50 one out of five zero that you run into, but that's great. If they have that, great. We can scroll on down and as we've covered before, let's go get you some funding offers today. You, you've got everything put together, but the vast majority, probably 95, 98% of small businesses, they either don't know this or they don't have it in place. And so that's, that's why we applied for the grant, received the grant and do what we do. Being one of our small business financial consultants, it's great. I mean, you're educating, you're helping people. You're not selling them. You're just teaching them what they need to know. And if they decide to participate in the grant, you make $1,250. So it's not get rich quick. But let's say you teach a, a room of 10 people at the church or at the library. I bet half will enroll. So if you taught a one-hour class, you help, you know, you'd help all 10 of them because now they know probably what they didn't know before. But if five of them enroll, what have you made? Let's say $6,000 for teaching that one Saturday morning class. I mean, it's, it's not about get, getting rich quick. It's about helping people. But that's not a bad side income either. Now, let, let's go to funding, though. Because everything we've talked about with these bullets was all about getting the business prepared, qualified, credible for funding. Of course, the end goal that they want is the funding. That's the final bullet here. So there's frankly many, many different types of funding sources. There's SBA loans and non-SBA, there's term, there's revolving, there's lines of credit, there's national banks, there's regional banks, there's local banks, there's alternative lenders, there's all different types of funding. Most of those will be, will be we will be good candidates for most of those because we have a credible business. But there is one specific type of funding that I think that you should be aware of that is unique. It's different than probably any other funding source you've ever seen. 
The Chapman Fund is through a taxing authority. And so what that means is it's money that's been pulled from the tax base and it's specifically allocated to help start and grow small businesses. So it's wonderful. So that means that we don't have to go to the bank and apply and, and meet those rigorous standards. We don't have to go to a credit union or even an alternative lender. We can go straight to the Chapman Fund. So that's good. But like most things in life, most things have pros and cons. The downside to the Chapman Fund is that it has a hard cap. It will only go up to 250000 so if we need more than 250, we can use that as our first tranche and then get that funded and then go for other types of larger funding. So that's okay. But the bottom line is this is what it takes to have a credible business for funding. You and I, as, as we call you small business financial consultants, we can go out and, and teach individuals what it takes. If they would like to participate in the grant, they certainly can. And that means that they enroll in the Startup Business Funding Package. And by doing so, they get the resources said, as stated here, and you make an easy $1,250 a piece. And, and you don't have any implementation responsibility, so that's easy. There's a really easy two-step process to qualify to participate in the grant. The first is to watch the training video, which is here, which is really what we're discussing now. So if if uh, they've been on a live Zoom, they could probably skip it. But nonetheless, the, the training video and then step two to enroll. It's very simple. Additionally, uh, there are four resources that I'm required to make sure that you're aware of here on ChapmanLoanProgram.org. The first is the link to enroll. And, and truth be known, that's the same as step two. So this and this is the same. The second, which we've referred to earlier, is a link to get funding offers, to get financing offers. And it's great. There's no hard inquiries. Participants get the offers. They can pick the ones they want. Most will get six to eight offers. Some will get more. Some will get less. The average offer size is around 16000 But you know, we'll just have them fill this out and we can see. So this is something that they could do uh, as part of this process. We would encourage them to do so. Uh, they, they frankly could participate in the, uh, the financing offers, even if they don't enroll. But if you and I have done a good job educating them, then they understand these are the prerequisites to get a large amount of business funding. Third resource is an additional training that has a number of funding success stories on it. And again, if you're interested in being one of our distribution partners where you're out, you're, you're teaching, you're educating, there, there's really no sales involved. Right? All we're doing is helping people understand what they often don't know, which is what does it take to qualify for funding? And once we qualify for funding, then there's all types of funding available, but we need a good, credible business first. So let's move to your questions, your comments, your concerns, and uh, see how we can help you today. Trevor says he's interested in doing community clinics. Great, great, great. So uh, any of you that's interested in doing community clinics, if you're not set up to be a distribution partner, you'll want to do, click on this first. And then we can work with you on setting those up. They, they can be done virtually, and that's fine, you know, online. Best results are probably doing them in person. And uh, we've had success doing them, again, in coordination with chambers and churches, community centers, all kinds of different organizations. You would just kind of assess in your community who you might want to, to partner with. But thank you for for that, Trevor, we look forward to working with you in your community. Let's see. Tre uh, oh, Trevor has another question. What if they don't know what type of trade lines they want? Well, that's part of the, the consultation that we go through with them is identifying what type of primary trade lines that they want to, uh, to add. So we'll work with them on that. That's not your burden. But what I said is, is true. The main categories would be real estate trade lines, 
company vehicle or plural vehicles, trade lines, business credit cards, and if all else fails, like little net 30, but, but those are the primary categories. But that's not your burden. As, as a consultant, you're educating people about what does it take to have a fundable business um, that the grant is paying you to, to do that, but you're not responsible for the implementation. So don't, don't worry about needing to, to know all the details. Uh, next question is about types of business. Yeah, so we, we can work with all different types of businesses. I, I think it's accurate to say that regardless of the type of business, this is an accurate and consistent list of what it takes to be credible. So we're, we're safe to follow this roadmap. It is true to infer that there's different types of funding for different types of capital raises, what we call uses of funds. And so we do need to, to work with the client to identify what the right type of funding is based upon their circumstances. But we'll we'll vet through that as we're we're building this out. All right, let's see. Uh, we're also asking nonprofits participate. Absolutely. Um, Ken's asking again. I think what what's the time frame? So, if if the client's just wanting instant, you know, we we can do the cheap business address includes the address, the full documentation, and we can go to funding in 24 hours. So if if all we're wanting to do, again, is, is essentially the first bullet and the last bullet, then we can go right over to cheap business address and just get it done. But that doesn't make these other areas of credibility go away. So the other areas of credibility are gonna take a bit of time, typically 30 to 60 days. Can we rush it along? Quite possibly. But again, it, it's okay if they need funding before 30 to 60 days, because we've discussed it several times. We'll just go ahead and get them some funding offers now while we're building a credible business. All right. Well, I think we've covered most. There's many other questions. I think we have 36 other questions, but as I skim through them, I, I think there's some combination of what we've already answered. So in kind of wrapping up, we get together most weekdays, weekday mornings at this time, eight o'clock central, and, and we essentially go over and over and over what it is that we do, which doesn't change. We have applied and received the startup grant. We help clients have a new business position for fast funding. You can see exactly what the grant covers, free business address, free filing of the Secretary of State, free assistance getting their EIN and, and their business bank account, free assistance in adding primary trade lines, writing those assets over so they have collateral. And then at that point, we're ready to go to fund. So it, it's really not a mystery. You can uh, certainly join us again for another live session. There's the embedded training video here on Chapman Loan Program. If you're interested in participating yourself, again, it, it's, if I can highlight it properly, there's a two-step process. It's just that simple. Follow those two steps, and then uh, we can certainly help you. So thank you all for your time this Monday morning. We will see you back, hopefully, tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning. Have a great day. Let us know how we can assist you. Bye-bye.